All right, uh, let's open the meeting. So just for people wondering about quorum, we can have a meeting without quorum. We just cannot vote and have a binding vote. Um, with, I think, the practical exception of adjourning. Um, so, um, yeah, so we have a publicly warned meeting. We just can't have a binding vote. Uh, but since we, other than the consent agenda, since we do not have any actions um, that require a vote, uh, that should not be a problem. So we will, we will proceed as um, needed. Uh, Open up to public comment. Uh, you know, public comment is a very important part of our deliberation. It's to uh, provide the board with constructive feedback from the community members about either items that we are currently considering on the agenda uh, or either other items of concern that uh, the community members uh, may have. Um, unfortunately, we are not um, allowed to, well, our our protocols uh, do not have us respond in real time. Um, that says we we take these very seriously and um, try to respond uh, with, with follow-up meetings. Uh, uh, and oftentimes the questions uh, require us to, to ask things of the administration and, and do some research. Uh, I do wanna say just a couple things about uh, the track proposal, which may be on several of your mind. We're gonna hear from Andrew LaRosa later. Um, I just wanna clarify that uh, that the track has not been substantively taken up by the board since the flooding of July 11th. Uh, we have not, uh, we've not considered the track in any substantive way. I think Kristen asked a question at the last meeting about uh, the damage to the current track of Andrew LaRosa, which, uh, as I recall, uh, he answered that, as with most of our grounds, there was some minor damage that will require uh, some repair. Um, uh, but that was not a question about the, the proposal that we approved ooh, quite a while ago now, like last fall. Uh, to renovate the track with a $1.8 million uh, proposal that we have been updated on. Um, since then, that that bids uh, came in high. So we, as of the last substantive discussion we had, um, we asked that a rebidding occur this year uh, and it would be later in this year. Uh, I do wanna say, and the board has not formally acted uh, but really consistent with discussions that um, I've been having with Libby. We understand the implications of the flood. Uh, we understand what it means. And we also understand the climate change models that show that we are likely to have more of these events in the future. Uh, and we need to be very mindful of that. Uh, as such, I think it is almost certain that we will delay the track project uh, and probably any other major investments on the ground other than what's needed to get kids safely into school um, and allow them to, um, to have the education and the opportunities that uh, they are expecting uh, for this fall. Um, and we will, I think, have a very broad and detailed discussion, as is the whole community, because Unfortunately, it is not just the high school on the track that is in the floodplain, this is our entire downtown, um, about what that means and what sort of investments we need to make. Um, and I think everything's on the table and there's been a lot of ideas constructively put forth in uh, the community and we look forward to that discussion, but uh, I don't think anyone on the board is thinking about or um, intent on pushing through any major infrastructure uh, expenditure, including the track, uh, without a thorough vetting of what the flooding means and whether we need to rethink uh, that investment. Um, other investments, uh, frankly, the location of the high school uh, and, and the future of, of that facility. And that's a broad discussion with uh, a lot of um, difficult questions and answers, and it requires a thoughtful conversation, and it also requires uh, immense community participation uh, and a lot of expertise and a lot of thought. So we are not 
uh, again, committed to pushing through the track uh, as, um, as we had approved prior to July 11th. So I just want to get out ahead of, of that because I'm sure there's a lot of questions around that. Since we have Jill on the phone, I am going to switch up the agenda and just do the consent agenda quickly so Jill can rejoin her family um, on vacation. Um, and so let's let's do that, and then we'll go to public comment. Uh, can we do policy monitoring as well, Jim. Okay. Vote for yeah. approval. Sorry, yeah. Jill. Yes, and thank you, Jill. We appreciate you hopping on. Um, do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? I move we approve the consent agenda. Great. Do I have a second? I second. Thank you, Emma. Um, all those in favor? Oh, any discussion? Great. All those in favor, uh, please say aye. Well, actually, we have to do the roll call. We're back on Zoom. Uh, Lynn, yay or nay? You can give a thumbs up if you can't find your, your mute button or a thumbs down. Thumbs up? Okay. Uh, Jill? Aye. Kristen? Aye. Uh, and Emma. Aye. Uh, I will also vote aye because um, because of our short numbers. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the policy monitoring report A1 board conflict of interest and A20 board meetings, agendas, and preparation? Um, do I have a motion to approve those policy to policy monitoring reports? So moved. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Second. Great. Two seconds. Uh, any discussion? Uh, Lynn, yay or nay? Yes? Okay. Uh, Jill? Aye. Kristen? Aye. And Emma? Aye. Uh, and I will also vote um, aye. Um, thank you, Jill. Enjoy your vacation. You can stick around if you want to, but uh, you look like you're in a beautiful spot. So I know what I'd do if I were in your shoes. Okay. okay thank you. Sorry. Uh, but, there. Uh, but no, thank you so much for calling in. Uh, we really Absolutely. appreciate you taking the time. Great. No problem. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Um, so public comment, we're all on uh, Zoom now. So uh, what I'd like you to do is, if you wish to speak, is to um, uh, raise your hand in the uh, uh, in the Zoom function, which is under, if you go to reactions, uh, there's a button that says raise hand. If you can't find that, you can just take yourself off camera and, and raise your hand uh, physically. So. Uh, anyone who would like to speak, uh, please do. Um, uh, Bridget, please introduce yourself, and you've got the floor. And great to see you, by the way. It's great to see all of you. My name is Bridget Acey. I was, until recently, the parent of a high school student, but not anymore. Um, and I just wanted to, to call in tonight because... Um, I wanted to express just so much appreciation for Libby and Andrew and the clean team and um, everybody at the high school um, who have been, and I know there are people whose names I don't know, have done so much work to get that school open again. I just know um, from my own son's experience that these are kids at the school now whose education has been interrupted once in a pretty dramatic way. And um, to not have them be able to go back to school this year would have been just another interruption um, for for those students. And it's just really amazing. I cannot actually believe that the places you <laughs> managed to recover so quickly. Um, also wanted to express appreciation for the superintendent's letter to the most recent letter to the community, which I think is just a great example of providing lots and lots of information so that people know what's going on um, and setting a really good tone for the discussions that are coming. And Jim, the same thing about your remarks just now, setting just a great tone for, unfortunately, the, the discussions that have to come over the next months and years as um, as Montpelier figure, figures out where to go from here. Um, and lastly, I just want to 
thank everyone who's on the board who's taking this on because that's yet another crisis to steer through. And um, I know that's a, a huge responsibility. So thanks, great job and much appreciated. Great, thank you, Bridget, we appreciate it. Um, anyone else uh, would like to speak? Paul, I see you came off camera. Is, is that, do you want to speak or? Ah, great. Sure, yes. Um, I just wanted to, uh, well, first, I appreciate your your comments, uh, Jim, that everything's on the table. Um, and I wanted to um, sort of put it in the board's, uh, bug in the board's ear that uh, now's probably a good time to start thinking about um, uh, forming a committee to investigate the possible merger of the uh, high school with U32. Um, I know it's been on and off the table many times, uh, but we've never really had the uh, motivation uh, to to follow through. And um, now, obviously, we do have that that motivation. Um, as you're probably aware, there a lot been a lot of comments on uh, Front Porch Forum, uh, a lot of questions, um, and uh, there's going to need to be some um, time spent uh, answering those questions and figuring out if it works for our community and the U32 uh, schools. Um, it won't be a quick process, uh, but I would suggest that the, um, the committee that uh, you and I, Jim, served on for the uh, Roxbury-Montpelier merger might be a model for you to follow. Uh, for those who, of you who aren't familiar with it, included representative members of uh, the school board as well as citizens um, received very strong support from uh, the administration as far as gathering facts and information that the committee then could uh, could try to digest. So it was a real uh, group effort uh, by several communities and several sectors of the community. So um, I hope you will put the topic on the agenda at the appropriate time. Uh, you know, certainly now is not the, the time, but uh, probably sooner rather than later is better because, as you said, uh, we don't want to invest a lot of uh, capital uh, into this building if we're going to be changing direction. Uh, obviously, we want to keep it, keep the building functioning <laughs> and uh, supporting the students that are there, as you said. Um, but at some point, we'll have to make a decision about what direction uh, we're going to go in. So thank you. Great. Thank you, Paul. I appreciate it. Um, and James. Hello. Um, I'm going to lower my hand so I don't forget. Uh, thank you. I did, first want to start off by uh, echoing um, Bridget's uh, thank you to Libby, the board, um, all, all the efforts uh, on behalf of the leadership to, to get the school ready, to support the school, the clean team. I can't even begin to imagine the amount of work they've done. Um, and I would add also a thanks. Libby's note I thought was, was so pitch perfect, as well as Jason's. Jason's um, letter from the principal I thought was utterly fantastic. So thank you uh, to all of the involved. Um, I just wanted to weigh in on a, on a couple of those things. I, mean, I, I made in some notes, so I hopefully I can do this quickly. Um, uh, that while I know that there are changes, you know, in consideration and coming, my I just want to put on put some flags in the ground. I guess going forward, first and foremost, um, a support for Montpelier to have its own high school. I think I. I and I would, I guess, beg, honestly, beg all voices involved. The In the wake of the flood, the, the argument has very naturally been about physical logistics and dollars. I mean, while those are, of course, incredibly important and powerful considerations, when it comes to educating the children of Montpelier and an identity for them as a high school and the size of the high school and the quality of education, et cetera, there are factors that aren't physical location and aren't dollars that I would say in some cases are more important than the, the latter two. Um, that that I hope members of the community will keep on, you know, that we can keep in mind and, and continue to elevate as, as those discussions go forward. Um, next, uh, um, sorry, I'm just... <laughs> Uh, that the the facilities for the students in the meantime, any change I'm assuming is going to be a relatively, relatively speaking, a long term change, which means we've got I'm not even sure what is it four or five hundred kids at MHS, 
um, seeking an education, about 400 kids. Um, I, uh, I, I, with respect to what um, Paul just said, um, I would hope that we can, uh, uh, and, I, and I don't, I'm not suggesting, Paul, that you said it this way, but I think it could, some might have been suggesting it, I think, in this way, which is kind of a bare minimum of functioning while we figure things out. And I think our kids deserve more than that. And I fully ad I recognize that this might mean throwing some money at a school where, you know, where changes down the road have to be made. But I think our kids deserve more than, than a, a bare minimum keep it functioning. Um, and again, I hope the community, the, and, and, and including when it comes to the track, um, I forget the numbers, but my understanding is that when you add up the numbers of kids in the high school and the numbers of kids in the middle school, that we're dealing, we're talking about a pretty significant percentage of the students. And I think those, the opportunities of those students to express their athletic selves deserves more consideration than recent cons discussions have been allowing for in the, in the public um, forum. And then finally, and then I'll stop, um, I really, really, really hope that we as adults, and I'm not talking about the board or Libby, I'm talking about the rest of us, the citizens in the town, um, can figure out a productive and you know useful way to continue these conversations that is not front porch forum and that is not social media. Um, our kids are on those things, as Libby noted in her note, and and speaking you know from I two in high school. Um, and it's not that these these kids don't deserve to be in the know on this stuff, but the 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 temperature of the debate makes it all feel like right now. And oh my God! And it's you know it's there's there's an urgency to it and a temperature to it that I don't think is good for our kids, and I, I don't think is fair to them. As Libby suggested, I think in your note, these kids deserve to go to school for however long it takes the community to make the decisions in a setting that is settled and that is firm, and and that says from the community saying to these kids, we've got your back. Whatever's coming down the road. You go about your business. We've got you, and we're going to encase you in a settled and firm situation. And, and I think housing this debate in a continued manner, as it's been going, doesn't do that. It it, it alerts our kids to too many firecrackers. I think is I, I, as best I can say it. So I hope we, as a community, can figure out a more subtle and structured way to have a, a very legitimate and open debate that doesn't expose the kids of the school to this ongoing pot of boiling water, I guess is how I'd put it. Um, and with that, thank you very much. And I apologize if I went on too long. No, thank you, James. Uh, we appreciate it. Um, anyone else? Otherwise, we can turn to um, the rest of our agenda. Great. Um, thank you, everyone, for spoke. Who, who spoke. Um, uh, now talking about, uh, being part of this discussion, um, we, uh, unfortunately, uh, Seiji Ohashi, fortunately for him, has started a new business, which is a pool hall in Barrie, um, and apparently pool halls in Barrie often require the owners to be there on Wednesday nights, um, so he is no longer able to, uh, be in uh, be on the board. Um, so he resigned a couple weeks ago. Uh, we wish Seiji well in his new endeavor. Um, he was he was a great board member. We will miss him. Um, we do have an open seat that we need to fill. Um, and um, I should forget the timeline on it now. I know I know the announcement went out a bit. I think we might even be trying to fill it by our next meeting. Um, uh, we have gotten uh, some. Uh, community members uh, who are extremely qualified, who are, are interested. Um, uh, but if that is something that interests you, please get um, a letter of interest uh, and a little bit about your background to the board. And um, we will be uh, moving forward that with that expeditiously because we really want this person to be part of um, the very important discussion that many of you touched on and I touched on earlier. Uh, as well as we are in our cyclical budget season, uh, pretty much starting at the year off, and it's really helpful to um, have a full board to do that. So, um, 
I, I can't say it's a thrill a minute, but it certainly is great service and uh, it's, it's a wonderful way to serve the community and um, our kids. Uh, with that, I'll turn it over to um, Andrew LaRosa uh, for a update on uh, Montpelier High School. And I also just want to um, echo the sentiments of some of the community members who spoke uh, and that we echoed last time. Um, it is really, um, really been amazing and inspiring to see uh, this, uh, you know, the staff and Libby and Andrew and and Tom and his custodial team, uh, and I know I'm leaving a few names out, uh, really pulled together, uh, and they've been working pretty pretty tirelessly. Uh, they have been, you know, in constant communication with the community, in constant communication with the board. Uh, to get what was pretty pretty significant flooding event at our high school uh, cleaned up um, and under control, so that way our students on August thirtieth, uh, which is right around the corner, um, uh, will hopefully be able to to return uh, safely to a school that is going to be, my understanding is, more or less fully functioning. Um, so Andrew, I will I will turn it over to to you and Libby to to give an update on that. Jim, I just have a quick question: Is there a deadline for is there a deadline for um, letters of interest? Libby, do you remember? I don't have the the post. You put it in. You put it in for the next board meeting that that the board would make the choice. Yeah. So I think I think. Um, as long as you get in before the next board meeting and there's the opportunity to to circle around and also for people who are interested uh, we will give some time at that board meeting for you to introduce yourselves and, and tell us a little about your candidacy i know uh, at least uh, one person um uh who's on this call right now has has uh has already expressed interest so um, you know, please feel free to to come next time, and and we'll hear from you in addition to your letter. And if if you can't make it, we will equally consider you as well. To it's being being at that meeting is not a not a prerequisite to being chosen. Hey, and Jim, just for uh for details' sake, at the next meeting that we'll consider this is the September sixth meeting. Yes. Just so folks have clarity on, on deadline. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And I'll, and I'll be sending out details of when we do that because our, our September 6th meeting is also going to be uh, part two of our retreat. So um, we'll have to give some thought to when it makes the most sense to, to do that and, um, you know, not structure it. So anyone has to be there for all four hours of that because that's, that's a lot. So, um <clears throat> At the high school, we're transitioning from sort of uh, the event to occup occupancy. Uh, we met with the uh, contractors we've been working with, with who have been drying the basement and um, monitoring the air and all those kind of good things. And we're moving. We're just starting now. Uh, we started today. They're basically slowly ramping down their systems to uh so we turn on our systems as well as put on the basement um fans basically what we're going to do is at both ends of the building we're going to have fans that are going to be sucking out 1200 cfm uh of air um that's going to be scrubbed through hepa filters and dumping it out into the atmosphere basically keeping the basement at negative pressure and that's how we're going to that's how we're going to um be for probably about six months we'll continue week to week doing air tests within the building to make sure the air is safe but we're going to be i can tell you as in having stood down there this morning or this afternoon with all the other sort of outside equipment turned off and just the exhaust fans on they're they're, they're drawing a pretty good breeze um out of the building so that's that process has started um it should be wrapped up by the end of the week that will allow um pure clean to pull their generators and um desiccant machines and air conditioning machines and all that and uh out by the end of this week so are they're going to set up that equipment in the basement for the long haul for like i say six months probably we're going to 
basically the areas where we're going to be exhausting air is on the back side of the stage through the um, um, through the, the 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 bulkhead. Nobody ever goes back there. Like I say, everything's going through HEPA filters, so uh, there's no concerns there. But uh, basically, we're exhausting from the bulkhead behind the stage, and then out by the cafeteria um, courtyard area. So we're gonna we're gonna uh, be blocking that area off so it can just sit and run, and just let it do its thing over the next six months, um, just so that we're perfectly comfortable with the environment down there. We have a contractor coming in in the um, in September to look. We had at one point, or up until a couple of weeks ago, um, we had put poly, a poly barrier. The basement is basically dirt it's actually sand and, and stone but it's, it's a dirt basement the floor there's no concrete floor so we had in the past a poly barrier under the gym and under the auditorium um, that worked really well we'll probably do that again with the rest of the basement we will talk with our our industrial hygienists and talk about the pros and cons of putting another barrier down in the basement um but that'll that'll come in the future. But we are on track for for the start of school, um, and equipment is slowly starting to leave the campus. The site itself, uh, Kyle Bale Vance and his crew have done a great job out front, um, sort of shoveling off the silt and integrating what's left and aerating, and they're going to start seeding. They they still have the practice field to do out front basically half of the practice field um, as you enter the school, the field on your left, uh, we refer to that as the practice field. About half of that's going to need to be scraped off, and uh, but we'll be able to use half of it for middle school field hockey. Uh, Matt Link has secured his work with Onion River Soccer to work with uh, Vermont College Fine Arts to use that field for soccer, for middle school soccer, but our game field is looking great at the high school and the field hockey field is looking great. Um, Tom and Kim have done a great job of aerating and rolling and aerating and rolling and all that. So it's actually, that's in pretty good shape. Um, our baseball field, well, Chip Stevens, who is with uh, Diamond uh, Tech, I call it Tech, but I think it's Diamond Turf. Uh, he works with the Mountaineers on their field and U32 on their fields. Um, he's working with Kyle with regards to getting some grass down this fall. He will be um, basically prepping the baseball infield in the spring so we can get a good season in on that. But next summer, we'll end up having to dig that out, dig that down another five inches and put in new soil, new sand in the infield, which had happened this spring. Uh, no, last last spring, last year. Um, so, uh, but that'll, that'll wait until the spring. Same thing with the softball field. We're basically bringing the grade up there to about five inches or so. And then in the spring, we'll be able to bring that clay in for the softball season. Uh, that can, they can bring that in and they can play right on that. Um, so we're, we're, in, we're in good shape. We're, we're expecting that the students are going to come into the building and never know that anything happened. And we were very fortunate that the water never reached the first floor and it stayed in the basement. So um, with regards to what the student's perception is and, and the staff, it, it'll be as if it never happened there. Um, and we're all on track. And the air, the air testing's happening weekly as well. Through yeah, the we're gonna conti we'll continue that throughout the year. And, and uh, the... Yeah. I named the air tester Bucky today, so it's uh it's got a name and everything. But he'll come in every every week during the during this fall, and then probably more sporadically as things yeah. are good and positive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Great, thank you, Andrew. Um, any questions for Andrew or Libby about the high school update? And again, um, fantastic, fantastic work, uh, and yet another. Yet another unexpected and difficult crisis. Um, well, one of the advantages of working in a school is contractors like working in schools. They they see a real, real value in, in the ones that we've been working with. You know, 
Brett with at, at Benoit and Scott and Tanner at uh, Johnson and Kyle Bellavance and all those they 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 see the value and and appreciation of of working in schools and they've they've definitely stepped up. Everybody involved has has really stepped up and and Tom and his crew especially. Fantastic. The other schools, just so people know, because they're going to be of interest, uh, at the high at the elementary school, the um, the rise space bathrooms been framed out. The plumbers were in uh, days run together. It was either yesterday or today. I don't know. Uh, they were in roughing in the new bathroom up there. Um, the little gym, the uh, walls are sheetrocked. The ceiling is is um, is in process uh the, the the framing is up but the sheetrock hasn't but the electrical is getting was roughed in today fire alarms are going to get roughed in tomorrow uh the auditorium unfortunately is, is taking a little longer than we hoped but i think the end results uh libby's seen a couple of snapshots i think the end results are going to be well worth it i think people are going to be very very pleased with that um tara's doing a great job um it's amazing what she's been doing over there and her crew. Um, floors have shined like they haven't shined in a long time. And um, and uh, so the cafeteria over there, if anybody's got kids that are in the elementary school, we took out the old clunker drop down tables that were chained to the wall. We got rid of that. It's all been painted. Uh, unfortunately, the new floor is not. There was manufacturing delays in that. So uh, the floor isn't down, but it's been revamped and repainted and it looks really nice and we're putting in new uh new lunch tables in that space so it's going to look great over at the middle school the guidance uh, suite is cranking along uh our our, our contractor has um agreed that our expectation is that on the 28th they're going to be able to move in but that's looking great that's the old wood shop that's now been created into two offices and a and a reception area for guidance that's going to be uh really nice um and we have at the in the cafeteria uh we kind of changed the flow we added a set of stairs to kind of keep to improve the flow in that space and that's all coming together and, and we'll be ready for the start of school so um those other little projects are, are cooking long as well Great questions for Andrew, and I have, I have a quick one, and sorry if you covered it, and it flew over my head. Um, the electrical in the high school, my understanding yep. is there is a temporary but but safe fix right now, and it yep. might take a while for the permanent fix to come in. Is, do you have an update on that? Yeah, so what has happened is, um, what the way it happened in the original is, is uh, Todd Benoit, uh, basically was working with the state inspectors and they were basically said to him is if it's safe if you think it's safe it's safe with us um so they came in at, during the event we turned killed the power to the building for a week they've gone through they've made their inventory of parts and pieces we're still barry and montpelier has a a new code with regards to electrical equipment that it needs to be out of the flood plane uh when you build new um we've got we've reached out well our assumption is we were going to move it up move it up to a create a new electrical closet uh they actually told us that 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 wasn't necessary i still have to go over and talk with andra and get a little clarity on what that all means and um whether it's by code or not if it's a good idea we're very fortunate that the area that we would need to put the electrical, we actually have space above where the existing electrical panels are. So it would actually, we're fortunate that we can basically go straight up with the stuff. But we're gonna get some clarity on that one. Um, we've got the boilers themselves. Uh, we were very fortunate in that, I think a school somewhere over in Addison had decommissioned a couple of their boilers. So they, the, our contractors were given these um, uh, burners, and so they had them in their warehouse. So we have one set up. Uh, we, we were able to retrofit that. So we actually have the, the hot water's been turned back on. Um, so we're ready to go there while we wait for our new equipment. But uh, that should be here well before the heating season. DDC control systems, they were down there this morning uh, or this afternoon replacing their old boards and putting in new boards um 
So like I say, our expectation, my expectation is that to the, 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 the anybody who's not in the basement getting their hands dirty, there's <laughs> everything's up and going and, um, and operational and it, it will be. Excellent. Thank you. Um, any, any board questions for Andrew? Excellent. Um, no, thanks again. We, we appreciate the update. We really appreciate the hard work. Um, and, uh, yeah, no, it, it's been, it's been quite an effort and, uh, um, you know, echoing, I think the comments of, of, of Bridget, uh, yeah, it, it's really great that we are able to, um, avoid having this crop of high schoolers have another disruptive event, um, in their schooling. So we, we appreciate the, the fantastic work that, that you and, and Libby and the custodial crew and Tom and everyone and all the contractors and everyone else who's pitched in, um, has, have done. Um, I, I don't, I don't generally like to do this, but I think when it's all said and done, I'm going to make a proper list of all the people and give it to Libby, Libby so she can actually in some, in some form really truly acknowledge, uh, the people that were, that we're in here doing this stuff because there's a lot of people being pulled in a lot of directions. And for some reason, our, our pull gets a little extra tug over and over in our way. And, and I, I credit that, I credit that to Tom because they know when they coming in uh, to do a project, he's going to be standing elbow to elbow with them all the way through. He's not, he, and that uh, sort of sets the tone. They know that when they're coming over, it's appreciated and we're going to help them as hard as they're helping us. So. You yeah. might have something to do with that too, Andrew. Just a little yeah. bit. Just Tom was here before me. He set the tone before I got here. Uh, you certainly continued it, and we we uh, hugely appreciate it. Um, it looks like it's just Lynn and I left. Uh, we were going to carve out a little time for, um, you know, as part of our meeting on September sixth. We were going to, we are going to uh, have part two of our um, of our retreat, kind of building off the work that we've been doing for a while in terms of putting um, indicators of success for our our board priorities. Um, Lynn, if you have any questions about that that you want to air now, uh, please do so. Otherwise, um, uh, I think we're uh, Kristen is back. Um, otherwise, I think we are uh, kind of at the bottom of our agenda. Uh, but Lynn, go ahead if you if you if you want to comment on those because I know unfortunately you are, I believe, not feeling well, not able to make the retreat. So um, yeah, I I don't have anything at this point. I I read the minutes from the retreat and I think I'm 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 good. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Kristen, any comments on the um, on the indicators of success or anything you want to kind of give thought to before we convene to dig into this project again on the sixth? Yeah, other than just that, I felt like really good, positive uh, forward motion um, occurred at our last meeting, and this definitely feels like just solid um, ground to start the goals work in earnest. So yeah, no changes or edits. Great. Thank you. Um, and we've done the policy money. So motion to adjourn and uh, do you have a motion to adjourn? Do we, do we need a motion to adjourn? We don't have a, why don't I do it anyways? We have a quorum. <laughs> we don't have a quorum. <laughs> uh, Marilyn, you want to make the motion and I'll. Sure. Uh, I move. We, we adjourn the meeting. And Kristen, do you want a second? Because you're the only one left. <laughs> second. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Um, aye. 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 That's great. Uh, uh, thank you all. I know it was a brief meeting. I uh, look forward to a, a long meeting on the 6th. And obviously, you know, as we discussed earlier, um, we have quite, quite a bit to uh, dig into uh, this fall. Um, and you know there'll be there'll be difficult discussions, but really important ones. So um, uh, yeah, 
I was looking forward to those that I, I can be. I wish I wish we we had different circumstances, but we have the circumstances we have. Um, and again, uh, anyone interested in the board, please uh, send me a letter of interest, uh, including your your background and, and why you want to serve uh, by the next meeting. And we will uh, we will fill that seat. And for those who've already done so, a huge thank you for being willing to step up and serve. So thanks. Uh, see you on the sixth.